Hey, it's Harker from Play. And today let's talk about adding logic to your designs using conditions in Play. Similar to a trigger or an action, a condition is an interaction node. So I can add it using my quick add menu to any trigger, in this case, a tap trigger. Now on my condition, you'll see three parts. First, you'll see the if section up here, then you'll see the else section, and you'll also see this that says add condition. And when I click add condition, I'll have the expression editor open and I can type in an expression. The output of this expression will be a Boolean. So that's either true or false. And the value of this is going to tell the condition what to do next. So let me show you an example. On this card, I have a tap trigger and on my tap trigger, I have this condition. And this condition checks the current state of the card on my page and checks if that state is the default state. Now, if that state is the default state, I'm going to set the state of that card to be a different state, so tall. So in this case, right now I have the default state on my iOS device, and when I tap on it, because it was in the default state, my condition is true, and now it sets the state to be a different state. So now I can duplicate this set state action and now, instead of it being on the if section, I'm gonna drag it down to the else statement. And I'm gonna change the state for the set state interaction to be default state. So now, when I tap on it and it's in default state, it's gonna take me to the tall state because this condition is true. But if I tap on it while it's in this tall state, now that condition is false and it's going to play the else actions here. So you can see that I set my state back to the default state. So what this really does, this interaction I have set up here, it lets me toggle back and forth between my states. So now let's look at a more complicated interaction. I'm gonna take all of this and I'm just gonna press return to collapse it. And now I'm going to add a pan trigger. And I'm gonna keep the state while panning because I want my condition to check while I'm actually panning or while my user is panning. So on the condition here, if we open the expression editor, now we are going to check where our finger is in the pan. So I'm going to type in trigger dot translation X. And as you can see here, this is going to be the horizontal distance of the pan, which left will be negative and right will be positive. So I'm going to check if this is greater than zero. So that would mean I am panning to the right. That would make it true. And if I'm panning to the left, it would make it false. So on the if section, so again, if this is true, I'm going to add a rotation Z action. And I'm going to rotate eight degrees on for animate. So now when I pan, you can see that my card rotates. I'm going to duplicate this set property action, and I'm going to drag one of them to the else section. I'm going to set this value to be negative eight. So now when I pan to the right, so I'm panning and my translation X is greater than zero, it's gonna pan eight degrees. But if I'm panning left, so my translation is less than zero, you can see it turns and it rotates negative eight degrees instead. And I can go back and forth with my finger and it's gonna rotate in each direction without me having to pick my finger up and restart a pan. And that's the powers of conditions in play. Thanks so much for watching this video. Can't wait to see what you create using conditions in play.